Which moons in the solar system have seasons? As we learned in our previous video how the seasons are on the other planets in the solar system, other planets in the solar system besides Earth also experience those annual climate changes that we call seasons. However, the seasons on other planets are obviously very different from the ones we enjoy here on Earth. Nevertheless, the underlying pattern of differentiation is the same for all planets. Simply put, when a planet is in its orbit with its north pole facing the sun, astronomers define the summer solstice as the moment when the sun reaches its highest point on the horizon and the winter solstice as the moment when it reaches its lowest point. Several causes contribute to the formation of the seasons on a planet. The most important, all other things being equal, is the tilt of the planet's axis of rotation. On Earth, the 23.5 degree tilt is the main reason for the climatic differences we observe between summer and winter. Planets with lower inclinations may have smaller variations. Planets with higher inclinations may have more extreme variations. Next in order of importance are the average distance from the Sun and the eccentricity of the orbit. Our orbit is nearly circular, so perihelion and aphelion are not too different. But other planets have much more elliptical orbits, Mercury and partly Mars, so their seasonal variations could be more pronounced. And in general, the variations are more pronounced for planets closer to the Sun. None of these features, however, could do it alone. Without the presence of an atmosphere, it would all be reduced to a seasonal variation in temperature, without all the weather effects, wind, pressure, precipitation, etc., that contribute to the formation of a climate. If the Earth had no atmosphere, it would experience violent temperature changes similar to those on the Moon, making it very difficult to measure the seasonal changes of even a body tilted 23 degrees. At this point, however, given the title of this video, the question can only be, do the moons of the solar system show anything like seasons? The short answer is yes. The longer answer is that it is the presence or absence of an atmosphere that matters. Why is that? Well, basically because all the larger moons rotate around axes that are almost perfectly orthogonal to the orbital plane. And so for none of them does the axis tilt factor come into play, in which case the only cyclic weather variations can only be driven by the more or less dense atmosphere. For example, are there seasons on our moon? I would say definitely not. If anything, we can say that they are much less pronounced than the seasons on Earth, and for two reasons. In fact, the lunar axis is tilted only 1.5 degrees, which does not allow for significant variations in illumination and insulation during the year. In addition, our natural satellite has almost no atmospheric cover. For this reason, the greatest variation in weather conditions on the surface comes from temperature changes between day and night. These diurnal variations dwarf any seasonal variations, making them imperceptible and unlikely to be measured. Even the Earth, if it did not have an atmosphere, would experience violent temperature changes similar to those on the Moon, making it very difficult to measure seasonal changes despite having such a tilted axis. On the Moon, the temperature of an illuminated area at the equator is about plus 130 degrees Celsius, and that of a shaded area is about minus 150 degrees Celsius there is no graduation. A person lying on his back on the moon would be heated to 130 degrees Celsius on the exposed side and cooled to minus 150 degrees Celsius on the back. On Earth, this temperature swing doesn't happen because of the presence of the atmosphere and oceans. The sun's rays heat the atmospheric gas envelope, which redistributes the heat at a global average temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. In addition, the thermoregulatory presence of bodies of water accumulates heat during the warm season and releases it during the winter. However, no liquid water has been found on the Moon. In summary, environmental variations on the Moon are not seasonal but are almost entirely conditioned by temperature changes between day and night. Okay, this may have been completely intuitive and predictable, but what about the other moons? Skipping Mars and its two tiny satellites, we come directly to the Jovian system where we cannot help but wonder if the large Galilean moons are somehow affected by the seasons. Let's start with the fact that all four of them, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, have almost no tilt in their orbital plane, orbit Jupiter in almost perfectly circular orbits, and are almost completely devoid of atmosphere. The absence of these three determinants makes the point immediately. 
None of Jupiter's large moons exhibit any characteristics that suggest the existence of a seasonal cycle. In fact, as with our moon, temperature variations on their surfaces are mainly influenced by the day-night cycle. For example, on Io, the most active world in the solar system, with hundreds of volcanoes and lava fountains erupting tens of kilometers high, the temperature varies from about minus 143 degrees Celsius on the illuminated side to about minus 180 degrees Celsius on the shaded side. The same goes for Europa, the smallest of the Galilean moons, slightly smaller than our moon but still the sixth largest in the solar system, which has the same characteristics, an almost non-existent atmosphere an axis of rotation perpendicular to the ecliptic, and a nearly circular orbit. Therefore, there is no form of seasonality in the climate and only slight variations in temperature, with minimums of minus 220 degrees Celsius and maximums of minus 150 degrees Celsius. Even Ganymede, the largest moon in the entire solar system and the only moon with its own magnetic field, has to make do with a climate regulated by daily temperature variations, ranging from a minimum of minus 203 degrees Celsius to a maximum of minus 121 degrees Celsius. The same fate awaits the most distant of the Medicean satellites. Callisto, no seasonal variations and temperatures ranging from minus 107 degrees Celsius to minus 192 degrees Celsius between day and night. To find the only moon, in fact, the only object in the solar system after Earth and Mars that can display real seasons, you have to travel all the way to Saturn and then set your sights on Titan. Titan is one of the most mysterious moons in our solar system, the second largest after Ganymede with its thick atmosphere and unique geological features. This moon of Saturn is a world that has been attracting the attention of astronomers and astrobiologists for years. Unlike any other moon, Titan actually has a climate model remarkably similar to Earth's, with well-defined seasons and weather conditions that can make for clear, cloudy, very windy or very rainy days in this remote world. With a surface that has dunes, rivers, estuaries, lakes and oceans, bearing in mind that we are still talking about an alien environment where the average temperature is minus 180 degrees Celsius. But what determines these seasonal variations? What are the factors that influence Titan's climate and how do they interact? Well, first of all, Titan's axis of rotation is tilted 27 degrees from the ecliptic, and that is enough to form very well-characterized seasons. Not like ours, of course, starting with the duration. In fact, Titan takes 29.5 Earth years to complete a full orbit around the Sun, along with Saturn, of course. So its seasons are much, much longer than ours. In fact, each of them has a duration of almost 7.4 years. The last summer solstice for the Northern Hemisphere occurred on Titan in 2017, and now the satellite is in the middle of its fall season. The Sun plays an important role in Titan's climate, but not as important as it does on Earth. Because of its distance from the Sun, Titan receives only about 1% of the amount of sunlight that Earth receives, but even this small amount of solar energy is enough to determine the Moon's climate. The Sun's energy heats Titan's atmosphere, circulating it and creating winds that can reach speeds of up to 500 km per hour. The Sun's energy also determines Titan's weather patterns, including clouds, rain, and storms. But that's not all. Titan also has an incredibly dense atmosphere, composed mostly of nitrogen with a small amount of methane that can play a crucial role in regulating its climate. And when we say dense, we mean that Saturn's large satellite surrounds itself with a gaseous envelope that at ground level is as much as 1.5 times the pressure of Earth at sea level. In the entire solar system, Titan's atmosphere is only less dense than that of Venus. The same layer of nitrogen and methane also regulates the amount of sunlight that reaches the surface, filtering out harmful ultraviolet radiation that could otherwise damage any potential life on the Moon. At a temperature of minus 180 degrees Celsius, the methane in the atmosphere condenses and becomes liquid, resulting in precipitation that forms rivers and lakes on the surface. It should also be noted that rainfall on Titan is not as frequent as on Earth, but when it does occur, it can be quite abundant. Needless to say, Titan is the only object in the outer solar system and the only moon besides our own that a probe has never set foot on. No spacecraft has visited Triton since Voyager 2 flew by in 1989. We're talking about the largest natural satellite of Neptune and one of the most massive in the entire solar system. In fact, the seventh after Titan, the moon, and the four Galilean moons of Jupiter. Triton is also the only large moon to orbit its planet in a retrograde motion. 
at an average distance from Neptune of about 355,000 kilometers and in just under six days. Because of its retrograde orbit and its composition, which is similar to that of Pluto, it is thought that Triton did not form together with Neptune, but is an object from the Kuiper Belt that was captured by the most distant planet in the solar system. In other words, a close relative of Pluto, which it shares many surface features. In 2010, telescopic observations from Earth confirmed the existence of seasonal cycles on Triton that alternate every 40 years. When Voyager 2 visited Triton's southern hemisphere, it was spring. Now with the summer solstice occurring in 2000, fall should have just begun in the same hemisphere. This is because the satellite's orbit is tilted by 129 degrees relative to the plane of the ecliptic or 39 degrees depending on which hemisphere is considered north. This means that during the planet's 165-year revolution, Triton will alternately present two different hemispheres to the Sun, resulting in an increase in temperature in the illuminated hemisphere. The temperature change between day and night is then amplified by the presence of suspended gaseous material. Triton also has a tenuous atmosphere of nitrogen 70,000 times less dense than Earth's probably released from the icy surface cover of the same element. During the winter months, Triton's atmosphere condenses and falls to the surface as nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide snow. During the summer months, when sunlight strikes the surface more directly, a thin surface layer evaporates, reforming the gaseous layer. Weak seasons, barely noticeable, but with documentable environmental changes. This, dear friends, is all we had to tell you to complete the discussion of how seasons appear on the various bodies of the solar system. After all, only three objects, Earth, Mars, and Titan, are those where seasons are more openly manifested. Almost everywhere, the concept of the seasonal cycle is something that can only be detected instrumentally. It is hard to imagine that an object so far from the light and warmth of the Sun with average temperatures of minus 235 degrees Celsius could have the conditions for a climatic cycle to develop. And yet, even at the distance of Neptune, 4.5 billion kilometers away, the force of the Sun, reduced to just one thousandth of what it hits our planet, makes itself felt. But perhaps, who knows, for a microorganism lurking in the ice of Europa or Triton, even a slight variation can mean summer or winter, and ultimately, life or death. Don't you agree?